or a guest continuing with the bacterial structures I have made a bacteria here. Remember the structure for a bacteria is slightly different between the gram positive, gram negative and the, the uh, pleomorphic bacteria which do not have a cell wall on them. So, now the, the basic structure is this that from inside out. So, if, if you are looking at this bacteria this inside is the cytoplasmic membrane. This is the cytoplasmic membrane. This is the same membrane which is present in all cells. So, the structure of this membrane as we know it this is going to be a lipid this is going to be a lipid bilayer. So, that is this, this structure. So, same, same thing the only addition here compared to other cells is that this has this membrane has penicillin binding proteins, penicillin So, when we will talk about penicillin we will talk about it. So, this is the plasma membrane outside the plasma membrane is the cell wall. So, if I start making a little structure here um, we had the plasma membrane which you just saw So, this is the plasma membrane outside the plasma membrane is the cell wall. The cell wall structure is actually it is a peptidoglycan. So, what happens is there are multiple layers of peptido, peptidoglycans and what does that mean? What is it made up of? It is made up of peptido and glycans, glycans means sugar. So, there are multiple sugar backbones normally just two types of sugars are present N acetyl muramic acid N and N acetyl glucosamine called NAM and NAG. These two are sitting there in an alternative fashion. So, NAM, NAG, NAM, NAG. So, this keeps alternating. So, NAM, NAG, NAM, NAG and so on. On the gram positive bacteria this layer peptidoglycan layers are they are up to 60, up to 60 layers. In gram negative bacteria there are just 3 up to 3 layers. So, gram positive up to 60 layers, gram negative up to 3 layers. So, of course, you can see that the gram negative is going to be very thin this layer the cell wall. Now, in this layer in the gram positive bacteria. So, I should actually make a layer on the side just to make sure that we can separate out the positive and negative. So, let us say this is plasma membrane here. This is peptidoglycans, peptido on the gram negative side plasma membrane peptidoglycans are up to 3. So, 1, 2 and 3 the space around the peptidoglycan in the gram negative this space both sides is called periplasmic space. So, this is gram negative, this is gram positive. Periplasmic space is only present in the gram negative. Then outside the gram negative uh, peptidoglycan is the outer layer which is made up of again a lipid bilayer. So, let me make the lipid bilayer here. 
another lipid bilayer this is gram negative and this has this again this looks like a membrane right but it has one more interesting thing in here and that is that we have lipopolysaccharides here so this is a lipid bilayer just like another plasma membrane so another cell membrane but it contains lipopolysaccharides lipopolysaccharides so what that means is on one side it has lipids so let me make this is the regular phospholipid but this is lps so the blue one here is going to be lps lps has lipids on one side then it has a so these are actually connected with two sugar molecules with the phosphate so phosphate phosphate and, and the sugar molecules then above that is a five sugar core five sugar core and above that are up to 25 above that above the core is another long chain of sugars which are up to 25 units of sugars or carbohydrates which are again so they these could be 3 4 or 5 units and there can be up to 25 units that is the outer membrane so this is called lipid bilayer containing lipopolysaccharides this is called outer membrane so now you got the plasma membrane periplasmic space then the outer membrane now on the gram positive side if you come here for a second the gram positive have little protein molecules or peptides coming out of the out of the cell wall so this is the cell cell wall the peptidoglycans so these are small protein molecules coming out these are called tychoic acid however some of these tychoic acid which are polyribitols some of them are or glycerols some of them are connected all the way down to the plasma membrane if they are connected to the lipids of the plasma membrane these are then called lipotychoic acid so this one is a lipotychoic acid and this one is a tychoic acid t i e c h o i c tychoic acid so lipotychoic acid and tychoic acid these lipotychoic and tychoic acids are the ones which will from the gram positive bacteria these are the ones which would induce tumor necrosis factor and il1 and that is when they'll cause the inflammation and they would cause the the fever and they can cause septic shock because this would create a cascade of inflammation and other things on the other hand in the gram negatives case it is the lipopolysaccharides which induce tnf and IL-1. So, it is these guys the lipid bilayer sorry the uh, LPS. So, that is the basic structure in addition to these structures over here there is flagellum attached. So, let us say this is a flagella coming out of the bacteria flagellum internally is connected up to the plasma membrane the structure of the flagellum is such so let me make a quick flagellum here it can be connected here then it is present passes through here in the lipotychoic sorry in the peptidoglycans and then it comes out and here is the flagellum same structure here the flagellum comes out of here 
So, one unit, then another unit present here and then a small portion present here. So, this is the, they both are the flagellum. Flagellum, what is the function of the flagellum? The function of the flagellum is the motility of the bacteria. This is an ATP based system. So, it uses ATP, it uses energy and moves the bacteria. Now, the movement of this flagellum can be of three types. One is clockwise movement, clockwise movement. If it is clockwise, bacteria gets a jet, jet like movement. If it is counterclockwise, movement then so counterclockwise would be this way then the bacteria get it gets a tumbling motility and if the flagellum is wrapped around the bacteria itself so if this is a spirochete normally these are wrapped around the spirochete so if it is a spirochete and the flagellum is wrapped around it then it would give us give a rotary movement and the spirochete would go in, in, in the direction, straight direction. So, that is a flagellum. So, now we have gotten the tachoic acid, lipotachoic acid, flagellum. Then there are fimbria as well. Fimbria or pili are the same things. Fimbria are smaller, pili can be a little bit bigger, plus there can be sex pili as well. So, what these are are these are small proteinaceous materials, protein materials mostly on the gram negative, gram positive have less fimbria as compared to gram negative. So, these are the fimbria. The fimbria can be of two type. One of course, just the ones that are sticking out like hair, like hair from the bacteria. What they do is their function is to adhere the bacteria to the surfaces. They would also uh, take part in um, creating little films, but the more important the second big function of the fimbria is sex pili. So, sex pili is that one of the bacteria. So, let us say this is a bacteria, this is a pilus as well, but this is a bigger pilus, it goes from the bacteria to another bacteria. So, let us say this was another bacteria standing next to it this pilus is now connecting these two bacteria and what happens is through this through this pilus there is exchange of plasmids plasmid i hope you know we'll talk about it today plasmid is plasmid is a circular dna molecule present inside the um, bacteria so that plasmid can actually go from one bacteria to the other and normally the gene to make the sex pilus is present on the on the plasmid. So, a bacteria which has a plasmid, plasmid is a DNA present circular DNA present separately, a bacteria that has a plasmid that can make a sex pilus that can encode the genes to create the sex pilus is called F plus bacteria and a bacteria that does not have a plasmid that can help make a sex pilus is called F minus. However, please remember this, this is interesting. When the plasmid makes a sex pilus and then the plasmid genes are moved over, of course, the F plus genes are moved from here to the here to the other bacteria and the other bacteria which was a female bacteria would become a male bacteria after this. So, that is the plasmid in there, we have gotten the um, structures there. One more thing inside the bacteria, the bacterial DNA is a double stranded chromosome which is one circle. So, it is actually connected as compared to other for example, our cells which have DNAs which are straight double stranded and they their ends are not tied. In case of the bacteria the ends of these th this becomes a circle. The, the other interesting thing is this remember that this lipopolysaccharide on the gram negative bacteria is a, a toxin and this is called uh, some of these lipopolysaccharides here are called endotoxins. These endotoxins 
of course are this part of the structure of the bacteria and the structure of the bacteria is encoded by the bacterial chromosome primary chromosome. So, we say that the endotoxin of a bacteria are formed by the main primary DNA. However, the exotoxins the, the little protein molecules that the bacteria can make and secrete out which gram positives do. So, gram positive can secrete out small exotoxins proteins these secretions are encoded by plasmids. So, plasmids encode exotoxins and DNA normal DNA encodes endotoxin that is a very important thing to remember in the bacterial structure. So, what else the lipotychoic acid and tychoic acid are not present on the gram negative bacteria. So, gram negative does not have that I would make flagellum these are on both side that is correct. Fimbria can be present on both fimbria can be present on both. So, this is fimbria, but mostly present on the gram negative. So, let me quickly see if I left anything out on the structure. So, we have talked about the lipopolysaccharides, tychoic acids, plasmids, uh, capsule. So, let us talk about the capsule as well. So, outside of the cell wall and outside of the uh, this peptidoglycan can be polysaccharide molecules sitting there making the capsule of a bacteria. So, polysaccharides making capsules capsule can be can have the virulence factor for example, the function of the capsule is actually to prevent the phagocytosis. How does it do that this is very interesting. So, let us say this is a bacteria and this bacteria has a capsule on it capsule is negatively charged. So, is the other cell for example, a neutrophil which is going to come there to eat this thing to to phagocytosis thing is also negatively charged. So, now this capsule is going to repel the neutrophil and it would evade it. So, it will just slip past just like the two negatives of a of a magnet. So, what happens is of course, you know that we would opsonize this bacteria we will put the C 3 B on it and we will put the antibodies on it and that would make it more digestible or more takeable and that is how the phagocytosis would occur. So, one function of the capsule is to evade the phagocytosis, the other function of the capsule is that it causes virulence as well, because it in invades phagocytosis that causes virulence. The third thing for lab diagnosis, the presence of capsule can help with the Quellung test. So, Quellung becomes positive in gram positive, gram positives normally have some of the gram positives have the capsule. So, whichever has the capsule becomes quelling positive. So, as we do the bacteria we will talk about the bacteria that have gotten the capsules in them. So, capsule we talked about now flagellum we have talked about it flagelli are made up of proteins and we talked about their structure and they, they are ATP using systems they have motors on their bases they are motors here which use ATP and they mo rotate it. So, remember that these are active energy takers. We talked about pelli and fimbria glycocalyx. So, some of the bacteria can also secrete a glycocalyx outside that makes the biofilms and finally, spores. So, let us quickly talk about spore. So, what happens is spores are normally formed by the gram positive bacteria. What happens is that when you dehydrate a, a bacteria this uh, like peptidoglycan layer becomes dehydrated and compresses and it compresses and forms a little tight circle. So, what happens is if this is a bacteria and you dehydrate that bacteria or give it less nutrition what bacteria is going to do is is going to get all of its cytoplasm or most of the cytoplasm out it would keep its plasmid it would keep its primary DNA. So, before we go to continue of course, bacteria has little ribosomes. Okay, so, the bacteria also has small 
uh, granules in them there are two types of granules one are the ribosomes which have got an RNA attached to them and these are making proteins and then are the nutritional uh, granules present in the bacteria that have gotten the nutrition for the bacteria. Now when, when the spore formation occurs what happens is bacteria would shed most of these things out keep its plasmid keep, keep its um, new, um, DNA then the peptidoglycan layer would become compressed and it would make a thick peptidoglycan layer outside the peptidoglycan layer an outer peptidoglycan layer would also develop that the difference between the two layers is that inner peptidoglycan layer has a lots of good cross links outer peptidoglycan layer does not have the cross links we will talk about cross links in a second and then outside is the carotene based capsule which helps bacteria insulate from outside. So this is carotene. So carotene is there loose peptidoglycan layer cross links then tight peptidoglycan layer and then is the DNA. So this is a spore. Spores are very very um, strong and they can actually withstand heat they do not actually get killed by the heat they can withstand dehydration, heat, chemical substances and lots of abuse. Once the nutritional status is restored the spore would regerminate into the bacteria. So that is that structure one thing I wanted to make sure that you understand that on the peptidoglycans layer the peptidoglycans are are made up of sugar backbones. So these are sugar backbones and these have gotten the NAM and NAG did we talk about it NAM and NAG carbohydrates and with them are four with every NAM there are four peptides or amino acids attached and the fourth amino acid which is called D alanine connects with the third amino acid of the other chain which may be either a lysine or a glucosamine. So this structure continues for all the NAMs N acetyl muramic acids. So this is the structure that would happen so NAM alternates with NAG. So this is the next NAM it would have also have the same structure and these would cross link. So we will talk more about the cross linking and the structure with penicillins, thank you.